Hey everyone, this is a medical terminology lesson on numbers and quantities specifically. So we're going to look at different prefixes and suffixes that denote different numbers and quantities and specifically we're going to look at it from a beginner standpoint. So we're going to first start talking about the numbers 1 through 5. All numbers are denoted by prefixes. The number 1 is denoted by the prefixes uni or mono, so you can think of unicycle or monomer. For the number two, it's denoted by the prefixes di or bi, so you can think of bilobular. For the number three, it's denoted by the prefix tri, so you can think again tricycle, so something with three wheels. For the number four, it's denoted by the prefixes quadri or tetra, so you can think of quadruplets. For the number five, it's denoted by the prefix pent or penta, so you can think of pentagon. For number 6 through 10, it's, 6 is denoted by hex or hexa, so you can think of hexagon. For number 7, it's denoted by hept or hepta, so you can think of heptagon, something with uh, a shape with seven sides. For 8, it's denoted by oct or octa, so you can think of octopus. For 9, it's denoted by non or nana, so you can think of nonagon. And 10 is denoted by dec or deci, so you can think of the words uh, decagon or decimal. So with regards to quantities that aren't specifically denoted by a certain number, we can think of prefixes like poly. So poly stands for many or a lot. Words you can think of for this include many different things. You can think of polymer, you can think of a polygon, those types of words. For a prefix denoting something that is few or several or very little, you can think of oligo or the other prefix posse, which isn't used as much. So oligo hydramnios would be a word that you could think of for oligo. Something with very little hydramnios is uh, amniotic fluid. So something with very little amniotic fluid. Posse, you can think of a paucity of something, so very little of something. Other words that denote quantity include pan or omni. Uh, these denote all, so pancytopenia, pancytopenia, all cells are in low amounts. Omni, you can think of omnipotent or omnipresent, those types of words. For a prefix meaning, again, many, like poly, is another one is multi, so you can think of multiple. Something that refers to something that's absent or lacking, you can think of the prefix a or an. So for these ones, you can think of apathy or anhedonia. For, again, another uh, prefix that stands for none or lacking, you can think of nully. Other prefixes that stand for quantities include haplo. Haplo means single, so you can think of it in the terms of one, like uni or mono, but haplo can be used in a different um, way. Diplo or dupli means double, so you can think of a duplicate. Primi, which means first, so you can think of prime, you can think of primitive, those types of words. The prefix hemi means half, and semi also means half, so you can think of the hemi diaphragm. The prefix hyper stands for above or a high level of something, so you can think of hypertension, high blood pressure. A prefix that stands for something that's equal, something that's the same, includes iso or equi. So you can think of isotonic, you can think of equitable. Another one that's similar but not quite the same is the prefix u, which means something that's average, something that's normal. You can think of euvolemia, a normal amount of volume. And conversely, you can think of the prefix hypo, meaning below, or something that's low in amount. And similar to what we talked about before, 
hypotension is actually a low blood pressure. So let's move on to practice problems now. Let's, let's take what we've learned from this lesson and apply it. So the first word we're going to look at is unilateral. So what does unilateral stand for? Let's break it down into pieces. The prefix uni, as we've learned from this lesson, means one or single. Lateral or lateral means pertaining to a side. So unilateral simply means pertaining to one side. The next word we're going to look at is hexagon. So again, we break it down. Hexa, like we've learned in this lesson, means the number six. And gon stands for side or sides. So it's a shape with six sides. Very easy. The next one is diplococci. So again, we break it down. Diplo, we've learned from this lesson, diplo means double. If you get tripped up with diplo, you can think of die. Die means two. So maybe that'll help you remember that diplo means double. And cocci is simply a suffix meaning the shape of a round shape or a spherical shape. So that really means double spheres, but it's actually a type of bacteria. The next word we're going to look at is oliguria. So oliguria. So we break it down again. The first part, part of it, the prefix olig or oligo, means few or several or very little. Urea is a urine condition. So really oliguria means a condition of very little urine. The next one is haplotype. So we break it down again. Haplo. Haplo means single, and type simply means type or group. So it's very easy to remember this one. It's a single type or group. So really, when we use the word haplotype, we're actually using it in relation to talking about a group of alleles from a single parent. The next word we're going to look at is prima gravida. So again, we break it down, primi, you can remember this one by primi, prim, prime, or primitive, which means first. Grav, or gravita, you might not know what this suffix means, but it really means pregnancy. So prima gravita, it simply means a first pregnancy. So when we see a, a woman who is in their first pregnancy, we call them a primi gravid, or prima gravida. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this lesson helpful. That was a medical terminology, uh, the basics lesson on specifically numbers and quantities. If you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.